Hi there. In this video, I'm going to do a deep dive into the export to Excel features that come with the Info River custom visual. I'll talk more detail about that as I get into it. But before we do that, I'd like to start off by showing you the export to Excel feature that is available as part of the standard Power BI suite. So I'm going to switch over to this report. Now it's important to note that I am in the Power BI service here. So this is not Power BI desktop and the more advanced export to Excel features, whether that be the standard Power BI features or the Info River features, they all work from within the service. Info River may consider making these available via desktop at some time in the future, particularly for the enterprise version, but for now it only works through the service. So here's the standard matrix visual. And if we come into the corner of that standard visual, we have an export data and there are three options. Now this third option here may be on or off. This is a setting configurable from within the report settings inside Power BI Desktop. If you export using this option, it will literally export every single line of data required to build the visual on the screen. And so in this case, I've got calendar year 2019 data. And therefore, if I was to select this option, it would export 30 odd thousand rows required to build this matrix. The second option is summarized data. I'll just quickly show you that. So I'll export the summarized data. And as you can see, this is simply a table that contains the data that is displayed on the screen. And this is particularly useful if I now wanted to rebuild the matrix or the pivot table that I can see here. I can just click into this table and insert a pivot table and I'll be able to rebuild the layout that you can see on the screen. Okay, so now let me show you the third option. Now, before I do that, I will just expand these rows. In fact, I'll leave one of them collapsed and I'll leave two expanded. And I'll also come here and put some conditional formatting. So just let me edit this. I'll come over to this measure and I'll do some conditional formatting. I'll just do a background color will do. I'll take the defaults and then I'll go back to the reading view and save it. So now let me show you the third option. So with those changes made, I'll come up here and export the data. I'll take the current layout click export and then we'll have a look at that file. And so the key things for you to note here are that the conditional formatting did not come across, but importantly, whatever I had expanded and collapsed has come across that exact way. So I can't see the detail for clothing because it's collapsed, but I can for the other two items. Okay, so that's the standard Power BI Visual, the new export experience from the Power BI service. So with that in mind, let me jump in and show you what's different about Info River. Okay, so here I am in the Info River custom visual. I've got the same basic structure as I showed you before using the standard Power BI matrix, but I'll show you a few differences with Info River. Now, one thing to note with Info River is when you go to export to Excel, you do not use this same menu. This is a standard menu for all visuals. When you go to export using Info River, you need to use this export to Excel option. And this only works in the service. It doesn't work in desktop, even though the icon is visible in desktop. It's probably worth me pointing out that I'm currently using the standard edition of Info River. So here's Info River standard. Most of the features that I'm going to show you, certainly all the features that I'm going to show you right now are available in all editions, starting from standard all the way up. There are a couple of changes that come in when you purchase the premium version. So uh, I'll talk about those differences when we get to them, but pretty much everything I'm about to show you now is available inside uh, standard and above. I'll go back to reading view. This is one of the important things about Info River is that you can do everything that I'm about to show you in reading view. You don't have to have edit rights to be able to do this export to Excel. And in fact, one of the features of Info River is that it is possible to turn off some of these buttons if you don't want your reader users to be able to do some of these tasks. All I have to do is go into edit mode. So you need to have edit access to the workspace. And then there is a reading view access settings. And so under the home tab, 
to do the export I need action so I can turn actions off and then save and go back to the reading view and now you see that as a reader I have no ability to uh, export to Excel so you've got a fair bit of control over that let me come back here and turn that back on okay so anyone with reading rights can export to Excel but if you want to make changes to the report, you need to have edit rights. So that's standard Power BI. Um, I do want to do a little bit of formatting on this before I export it. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to apply some conditional formatting. So I'll come up here. Now, depending on the version, you will have more or less conditional formatting features. I'm in the standard version at the moment. So there's a certain number of conditional formatting, but there are other versions that have more conditional formatting features. So I'm going to create a rule on this column and I'm going to do a color scale. I'll just take the default values and click apply. And so this is pretty standard um, conditional formatting. So, so that's the first thing. Secondly, I'm going to put some conditional formatting on this column. So I'll, this time I'll do a quick rule. I want to highlight my negative values. I'll just take the defaults. It puts the negative values as red. So I'll click apply. You will notice here that the totals haven't had this conditional formatting applied. This is a feature over here. So I want to apply just to the values or just to the totals, or I can do it to values and totals. So in this case, I'll do values and totals. If you're doing one of these um, color scales, you might want to just apply it to either the totals or to the values. Otherwise, the color scales are not going to work terribly well. All right, so there we have some conditional formatting. Um, I will take the opportunity of adding some notes. So if I was to pick a particular data point here, I might like to make a note to say that, um, you know, good sales here, something like this. I can add a note to a particular cell within the visual. You can see this here. I do have an option here where I can turn on footnotes so that I can see those footnotes down the bottom. I'm going to turn those off. And now that I've got three different items, so I've got two different types of formatting plus a note, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'll go back to the reading view. And then as a reader, I can export that. So let's click on export to Excel and take a look at the exported file. Okay, so here we are inside the exported file. And the key things to note are that we have both of the formats that were exported from the visual. Also notice that we have this little tooltip here telling us what the notes were that were placed within the cell in Info River. And these formats here are actually um, controlled by the format color painter here. So you can see that the cell has actually been formatted using native Excel cell formatting. Okay, so I'm back here in the Power BI service. Just let me show you a couple of other things before we have a look at some of the more advanced features in the premium version and above. So what I will do, you would have noticed earlier on that um, I have these numbers are being automatically converted into thousands. So I can control that from the quick format here. And I'm going to come back and use the native formatting here. Notice now that I've got this, uh, the dollar signs coming from the measure and I don't have those thousands operators that have been applied. Um, also, there is a pagination feature that's pretty standard in Info River. So notice here that at the moment I've got one page. Uh, all of the data fits on a particular page. But what I will do this time is I'm going to come to the advanced tab and I'm going to insert a page break at the category level. So now you can see that I've got three pages. So first page, second page and third page. And so with that applied, I'm going to go ahead and export again. So come up here, export to Excel and we'll open the new exported file and have a look at the difference. Okay, so here we are in uh, the exported version and the things to note are that the formatted changes to the numbers have flowed through. 
the notes and the conditional formatting is still there of course but importantly look what's happened over here the pagination that was done within the info river visual has flowed through to excel and so i can actually jump tabs and you could use this feature to put perhaps different tabs for different regions or pretty much whatever you need to do to separate your data for whatever purposes you have in mind Okay, so now I'm going to show you some of the features that are available um, in some of the more advanced versions. So I've actually got the premium version of InfoRiver here. So previously it was the standard. There's a pro version, so standard and pro. The export to Excel is the same. Once you go to premium, there's some additional things that you can do. Um, the first thing that's different in premium is that I have some additional notes capability. So I can turn on a notes column and I can put some extra notes in a note column. So this is a slightly different approach to um, the cell-based notes that are available before. Okay, so a couple of notes in my note column. Um, also what I'll do this time is I'll come in and I need to go into edit mode because I want to change my formatting. Notice that the notes could be added in read mode, but to make changes to the report itself, I need to come into edit mode so conditional formatting I'll just manage the rules and I'll get rid of the color background that I've added before and what I'll do is I'll add a new rule and notice that now I've got some additional conditional formatting features that were not available in the standard edition and so in this case I'm going to take data bars and put them in and I'll click apply there Okay, with those few changes made, I'm going to just go back, save, and go back into reading view so you can see what would happen once again if you were a reader. Okay, so in this premium version, notice that we still have our export as Excel button here, but there's also a new menu here, an export menu, which is dedicated for the more advanced capabilities of the premium version. Now, there are two main sections here. So this section here, is all to do with exporting to PDF and that will be the subject of a separate video at some stage in the future. Now over here we also have this export to Excel button. This is the same button that is available over here so it does exactly the same thing. But also note that we have a few other options. You can choose to include notes in your export, yes or no. And we also have a couple of options here on different ways to export using hierarchies. So either fully expanded or with expand collapse. So I'm going to select with expand collapse. I'll leave notes included and we'll now go ahead and test this export to Excel. So I'll click and I'll just right click and click um, open link in new tab and that will open a copy of that file which has been downloaded onto my computer. And there we have the export. So note now that we do have the data bars that have come across from the visual. Note that we've got the same color formatting that we had before. We've still got the tooltips in here. I'll just enable editing so that we can see those. So we've got this hover over tooltip. We've got our new notes column, which has been exported. Great if you're doing commentary online and would like to have that going out to Excel. But also now look over here, we've got this expand collapse capability. So this is the inbuilt grouping function that is available within Excel. And I can come back here and collapse to the different levels and do discretionary expand collapse within native Excel. And with regard to this formatting here, this is actually conditional formatting. So if I come in here and have a look at the conditional formatting rules, you'll see that those same conditional formatting rules that existed in InfoRiver have been configured natively within Excel. Now, before I wrap up this topic of export to Excel, I'm going to show you a quite advanced feature that can be done in InfoRiver that can't be done in standard Power BI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage some of the other features, in particular, the ability to come into the visual and do some manual input of numbers. And I'm going to use a technique to create a budget for the next financial year 
export that budget through to Excel using the export to Excel features that I've been showing you here, and then reload that budget back into my data model. So this was quite an advanced feature, very difficult to do um, any other way than with a, a product such as Info River. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit this online version of my model. So edit, and I'm gonna create a brand new tab for my budget. And I'm going to add a new copy of the Info River visual on my canvas. All right, so I'm going to do my budgeting at a month level and at a product category and subcategory level. So this is very common in budgeting. So what I'll do is I'll come and bring in my category hierarchy into the visual. I will bring total sales because I'm going to use sales as the basis for my budget. And I will also go and bring in a calendar month number of year onto columns. So this is now basically all sales uh, for a 12 month period. Now I'm going to do a fiscal year 2019 budget here using this sample data that I've got. So what I will do is I'll put a filter on fiscal year is 2018. So you can see I've got a full 365 days of sales in this particular fiscal year. And so this will be my baseline. Now there's a couple of things I'd like to do because I've got this hierarchy set up here. So I'm going to flatten this out into a table. And this is actually a requirement if you want to be able to show items with no values. And I definitely want to do that because I do have some categories that don't have any sales. So I'm going to come up here and I say show items with no data. And so now you can see that I've got some new products in my database that I don't have sales and I want to do some budgeting for those new products within this uh, exercise. So I've still got pagination switched on so it's probably best just to come and turn to a single page. And so now I've got a nice matrix. It looks very much like Excel. Remember these are the Excel like features of Info River. And now I'm going to set about setting a budget for 2019 using these 2018 actual sales as a starting point. All right, so I'm going to the advanced tab here and I'm going to use manual input for my budgeting process. You'll notice here that I have two options. I can either add effectively a visual measure, which will be one set of numbers for every month, or I can add a visual column which will basically be like another grand total at the end. In this case I'm going to do a visual measure because I'm trying to work out the sales by month by subcategory. And I'll just take the defaults which, and we'll have a look at those when we get in here. So there's my new static measure. What I should have done was give it a name. So just let me go back and call this, I'll call it my FY 2019 budget. I'll just update that. All right, so if I come all the way over to the left, here is the full year sales for 2018, so 16.4 million. And so what I'm going to do now is set a starting target of $17 million. So I'm just gonna type in 17M, and you can see when I enter that 17 million into the main grand total for all products, that this 17 million has been allocated across every cell within the table. So at this stage, it's just allocated evenly. Every data point is, has been assigned $38,000. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change this and say that I want to distribute it based on the total sales. And in doing this, you can see how that the, the numbers now are proportionate to the increase. So basically every product has been proportionately assigned a portion of the 17 million. All right, so there's a few things that I might now want to do because I might have decided that I'm going to do some heavy promotion on bottles and cages. And so what I'll do is I'm going to increase that number to 70,000. So I'll just increase that. And you'll notice that I get this color indication now indicating that that amount has been allocated and it's a different allocation from the original total. And also notice that the, um, the 17 million has increased. So let's say I'm going to launch some new products. I'm going to start selling lights and I'm going to start selling pumps in this next financial year. So I need to make an assessment on 
what sort of sales I'm going to get from lights. So I would say that I'm going to get similar sales to bike racks, which is 38,000 will be the budget. So I'm going to be a little bit bold and say I'm going to get 40,000 sales. I'll allocate that. Now this time, because we don't have any sales in prior year, it's been equally allocated across the 12 month period. But I'm going to launch my product in the first month and then I'm going to expect to see some growth occurring throughout the year. So I'm going to distribute by the columns and I'm going to apply a trend. And so I'm expecting to get, let's say 5%, 4% um, increased sales over time. And so what you'll see now is that every month has been incremented by 4% across the entire 12 month period in order to make up this $40,000. And I'll also put in some numbers for pumps. I'll just say 30,000. Notice the ease, I can just say 30K um, to assign 30,000. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to save my report and I'll switch back to reading view. And you can see that uh, that data has been saved. But now what would be really useful would be to load this data back into my Power BI desktop file so that I can use this as part of my perhaps my um, scenario analysis so I can see what impact this is going to have to my business. So I'm going to go back into edit mode and I now need to export this. So what I'll do is I'll just tidy it up. I'll get rid of the total sales for the purposes of exporting my budget. I don't need total sales. I could export it like this and use Power Query to manipulate it when I load it. But what I think I'll do is I'll just bring the month number of year up here and basically change the shape of this table so I just get a nice tabular format. All right, so I'll save that and then I'm going to switch over to export and I'll export as Excel. And just as I've done in the past, I'll go ahead and open that file. Now, if I like, I can save this file with a name. This might be scenario one and I could do a number of these um, these budgeting exercises until I get to a number that makes sense to me. So I'm just going to save this. Um, I'll just save it for the sake of the exercise in my downloads. I'll call it budget um, version one. Right, so with that done, I'm going to close down Excel and I'm going to jump back over to Power BI Desktop. So I have Power BI Desktop open. Now I do have a local copy of this Power BI Desktop file, but given I've done some work online, I think it would make more sense if I go back into Power BI and come over and download this workbook. I have to come up to File, Download the Report. And so now what I'm effectively doing is downloading a new version of my PBIX file, including this budget modeling work that I've done online. And once it's downloaded, I can open that file locally and that will open up inside Power BI Desktop. Okay, so I've opened my local copy. I actually renamed the file name as well. And so now I have my local copy of my master data model and I'm going to go ahead and import my data which I created online. So I'm going to get data from Excel. And here's my version one budget which I'll load. I'll transform the data. Okay, so here's my file. I need to call this budget. And I just need to do a little bit of cleaning up. So I will remove top rows. I'm going to use the first row as header. And I need to remove the top rows because I don't need the total. Um, I've got a whole lot of columns that I don't need, so I'll just highlight the ones that I do. You can see from the profiling here that I've got quite a few nulls. So these are the products that I don't have sales for that I don't have a budget for for next year. So I'll just remove the nulls. And I might just call this my budget now. It's in thousands. So I do need to do a conversion here. So I'll do that and then transform. I'll do a standard multiply by a thousand because I want the same units as I have um, with my regular sales data. 
Um, I might want to write, round it off, but for the sake of the exercise, I'll leave it like that. Um, the other piece that's missing is I don't have the year here, so I really need to convert this column so that I can join it to the rest of my data model. So if I come over here to my calendar and come across, you'll notice that I've got this fiscal period column. This is the fiscal year followed by the month number of year. And I'm going to use this column to join my budget table back into my model. And so it's important that I create the same column inside my budget table. So we've done the budget for fiscal year 2019. So I'll just add a column, a custom column, and I'll call it the same thing, fiscal period. And it will be, I'll just hard code it because it's just 2019. In fact, double zero, and then I just need to add to that the month number of year, and that should give me the correct syntax. I'll set the format, and now I can get rid of this column I don't need. I also don't need the category because I'm going to join it on the subcategory. So I'll just remove those two columns and I think that's about right. So I might just move those across and now I'll close and apply. OK, so now I've loaded the budget data. I need to bring it in. Now, this is a little bit more complex DAX. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. But what I will do is I'll create a many to many relationship between the budget subcategory and the products subcategory. There are some things that you need to do cautiously here beyond the scope of this session. So a many to many relationship, single cross filtering. And I'll do the same with the fiscal period over here. Create a many to many relationship. And with that done, I can now jump over. I will put a new Info River Visual on my canvas and I will bring my product hierarchy into the canvas and I'll also bring my total sales measure. I haven't done a budget measure, but I'll just bring in the budget column and I'll bring the calendar fiscal year into my columns and you can see that I've got the 17 million budget that I've got. I've already got some sales in 2019 coming in. I haven't done budgets for the previous years. And then of course, if I wanted to use one of the templates, I could come in and switch to templates. I could have a look at these templates that comparing budget versus actuals. I don't have any sales to compare given that I'm in the current year. But if I bring the budget into my plan, uh, well here you can see that I automatically get this reporting and if I was going to do that I would probably take the fiscal year off of here and come up and put my fiscal year on as a filter on my page so I want to take a look at the 2019 and now I'm able to compare the plan with the actual sales as they come in throughout the year. Okay, so that concludes my deep dive into the export to Excel features of InfoRiver. Just a quick summary in review. When you export using InfoRiver Custom Visual, you're going to get this nice rich experience where conditional formatting, number formatting, notes that are added, notes that are added in columns, even this expand collapse capability is all going to be supported natively within Excel. Also, I showed you that you are able to set up like a paginated reporting capability where you could put a page break and export to Excel and get multiple tabs with one page for each of the categories or however you choose to break the particular pages. And then in the last example, I showed you how you can use the more advanced capabilities where you can come in here and you can use manual input to create a budget for your future years. You can use export to Excel to save that budget back to a file, reload that file back into InfoRiver, make it part of your data model. And then from there, you can go ahead and start building some of the custom or standard reporting that's available.